are now recording. Experimentation is the key. I like that. That sounds like something from Weird Science. Whoa, where? Speaking of which, where am I? I don't actually know where I am. Hopefully in Europe? I, I guess. So, all right. Hey, folks, it's Grimwit from Natch Evil. And uh, we're playing Casual Truck. With me today is Al. What's up? How you doing? That was more question than answer. But, uh, all right. So now I know it really is Al, and not a figment of my imagination. That seems to be a bigger problem every day. And uh, considering that I am part of the player character aristocracy, these cars in my way are really starting to bug me. I'm better than this. I don't need to wait in line. Get out of here, guys. Get out of here. Let me start are there my any cheat codes in casual truck. You know what? I don't know. Uh, I drive a cheat code. It's uh -huh. bigger and nastier than anybody else on the road right now, so I consider that my cheat code. Also, there are red lights. Ha! <laughs> I scoff at them. Um, so, I, I don't really have a good question for today's casual truck, so I will just start with a riddle. What have I got in my pocket? Ooh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say keys, maybe a wallet, a human finger. Well, you got two out of three, right? Hooray. No, no. My psychic powers are on task today. No, I don't have any keys. So where is the human finger from? <laughs> Get that finger out of your nose. Whose finger is that, anyway? <laughs> I think Dave Barry did that one. <clears throat> so, uh... Alright. Um... This, I remember distinctly, uh, you, in the very beginning, when you wanted to get onto Casual Truck, you wanted to talk about Anilo and the magic therein. Absolutely. This fascinates me. Well, specifically time, although I've kind of worked this out now, because it's been a while since you've wanted to join on, uh, but there are nine different kinds of magic in, uh, in the world of Anilo, so we can't just talk about time, but... But time is extremely fascinating. So, what what is your question? How about you start with a question in 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 a casual truck? Is all of time connected, or is everyone in possession of their own stream? Would affecting one stream affect all of reality? Not necessarily. Although, the, it depends. Okay. How time works is time is a bundle of threads. This is how the Felfkin imagine time. Time is a bundle of threads. And the threads are knitted out of causality. Which is a weird way to think of it. Not actions per se, but the things that cause actions to happen. Those little subtle thoughts in the back of your head that drive you toward a distinct decision whether you want to make that decision or not? That would be part of what makes the threat, yes. Because of that, though, there can be these little gaps between uh, the thread that you can kind of whittle things into. Because even though the threads look like they're solid, they're actually made up of points of causality so try to imagine if you will um let's see what's a good example uh okay let's say we have a stone statue Got it. and it's a stone statue sitting in a room now we have one point of causality how did the stone statue get to be sitting in the room to which we answer well somebody put it there and that somebody is one point of causality but the stone statue stays in this empty room for, say, I don't know, let's say two weeks. So for two weeks, nothing happens. It's just there. And then at the end of the second week, somebody sees the statue and it inspires them to make a painting, say. Okay. That last point is a point of causality. The statue caused someone to make a drawing so the statue has two weeks uh, a two-week gap 
in between points of causality. I should probably call them- OW MY GOD! I was just T-boned! Holy shit! Asshole. Sue is ass. Oh, oh yeah. my god! It came out of fucking nowhere! I think he's- Holy hell, he damaged the hell out of my truck! Oh, I, my engine! Everything is busted! Jesus Christ, where did he even come from? Casual truck insurance is gonna be pissed. Your rates are gonna go up, dude. Casual truck insurance, protecting everything you own, like cars and trucks and mobile homes, accidents and tickets too. Call and we'll take care of you. Five four three two five four one. Don't ask. I feel like that's an actual number <laughs> from an actual ad that you you dated. <laughs> uh, it's actually Tall Paul Insurance from the 1980s. Don't ask. Don't ask. There's so many things you don't want to know. So, where was I? The Slender Man before he found his internet fame. <laughs> oh my god, I need to find 66% damage. I need to find some place to, to shack up. And I am... What? What? Drive at this point. I, I can... 66% <laughs> damage is total. I know! I know! I need to find some place... I was just going to follow this road to the south, but... I think I gotta take it to the north now and go to Erfurt. Or is is Nuremberg closer? Erfurt or Nuremberg? What do you think, man? Nuremberg sounds less, you know, monstrous. Okay, we'll go to Nuremberg. Actually, no, no, we should probably go to. Well, fuck, I'm fucked. No matter what I do. Okay, I'll take Erfurt just because it looks it's a, it's easier to find. I have to take fewer. That, but god damn god damn and there's that moment of causality the Felkin that the Felkin sing yes yes that's a good point although the, the act of moving is part of the causality good lord <laughs> I have to keep restarting my engine as I limp to wherever although I am still part of the uh, the player character aristocracy oh shit no 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 not gonna crash into that there we go oh god damn it there's another Another car, I don't want to get behind the car. So, yeah, this this is fun. Life is great. So, okay, the, the threads of people, places, and things are all causality-based. That's that's what the threads are made of. So when you I'll think of time, you're, you're actually think of, thinking of one cause to another. And so they can only affect that one cause at a time? Because I would figure that eventually the causality of the universe having been created would have to weigh in at some point. That's a cause and effect, isn't it? Well, see, this is where things get kind of fuzzy, because whenever you're talking about time, in general, you're talking about either A theory or B theory of time. There's a, I think there are actual terms, A theory and B theory, but I can't remember which one is which. And the way that time works is um, either everything is fitted together like a puzzle. There's only one timeline, right? Right. Or, or you have the like multiplicity timeline, which I think is B theory, where every instance of chance and choice will affect um, basically a separate universe, as it were, as time splits off and branches. Personally, I believe that time branches off and that there are multiple timelines. But that's not fun to write. So I would think in the real world, any sort of time travel would be either disastrous or pointless. Well, I don't understand why it would be pointless. After all, if you wanted to see, say, history in the making, that would be a pretty good way to do it is to just go back in time people forget that the earth is moving the sun is moving our entire solar system is moving throughout the galaxy if we were to go back in time i would think that we would wind up where the earth is now not where the earth was so if a time traveler were to poof back 20 years he'd be in this exact spot the earth would be 20 years away 
That's fine, except you forget that any form of movement that happens in space is purely relative to other spatial coordinates. If you're saying that the Earth is moving, the solar system is moving, and the galaxy is moving, compared to what? What are they moving compared to? And where is this? Like, when, whenever you shift in time, where is exactly the point that we should be calibrating our movement from? Well, let me step back away from the galaxy and the solar system moving itself. What I can definitively say is that the universe is expanding. So even if we don't take into account all of the other celestial bodies, all galaxies are moving away from each other, except for the ones doomed to collide. Because of the special way that the universe is expanding, you also have to remember that every point of the universe is the center of the universe. Again, that form of movement has to be calibrated from what point, you know, some point, what point should that be if we decide to travel through time? And again, this is real world. It doesn't necessarily apply to what you have going on. Well, in the world of Anilo, come on, come on, hang on, my engine is malfunctioning and won't move. I wonder why. Well, I mean, it says that my engine is completely punctured and dead, but, uh, you know, I don't believe it. She, the, the old lady can take it. Just Fred <laughs> Flintstone that thing all the way to Ifrit Phil or wherever the hell you're going. This thing must weigh 20 tons by itself. I'm sure somebody will help me push it. Oh, good, the Hulk's willing to, to help me get a push start. See, the trick is getting it to stop. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, okay, getting it to stop is easy. There, are, There's plenty of oncoming traffic. That'll stop it. Screw brakes. <laughs> the world is my brake. That tree is my brake. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> okay, as far as Anilo goes, even though it's mostly hidden from the general populace, um... Celestial beings, gods, ghosts, etc. All that really exists. So, Anilo exists on uh, a world which is not appropriately called Mashta. And Mashta is literally the center of the universe. So, time travel is not too, not too much of a problem when you're worried about where the planet is at any given moment. There is one problem, though, with time travel. Physically, I'm not sure how you would go about it. I don't think a felf could physically travel through time, not because of what it needs to affect, but because how do you? That would require you to loop causality in on itself. Yeah, you would have to literally puncture the wall of reality with your cause of moving into the past. Not, well, not that, not that complicated. You wouldn't have to do that. It is part of reality that they can affect time and therefore causality. But consider this. Let's say, uh, have you read the pocket watch effect from my comics? The idea that a it's pocket... Long. Okay, okay. Pocket watch effect was basically, uh, a loop of causality. There we go. I'm just limping along. Okay, uh, the idea was you had a pocket watch that could travel through time. But if you followed the pocket watch through the story, it looped. It is its own existence. Like, it exists because it exists. Nothing created it. It was always existing in this loop of time. Nice. Yeah. Well, so, in order to be a time mage and you to affect time and go back in time, that would mean that you would have to create a loop. How? How would you create the loop? Now, it doesn't mean that you can't affect time in other ways. Oh, oh I need to figure out where I'm going. Uh, for example, you can see pretty much causality, you know, figure out what caused what, because if nothing else, you can at least sense where the stronger points of destiny would be. Like, okay, this choice you're about to make, this crossroad you're about to come to, this is a pretty big deal, and it will affect the rest of your life. They'll be able to tell you that much. Right. But 
There are also little things they can do, like, for example, pull on the threads of causality and stretch them a little bit. Say, for example, um, the, the threads, when there's nothing in between the threads, they're, they're a little bit elastic. So, let's say you want to speed someone up. You Tighten it together. Yeah, you, you tighten the points of causality together. Or if you slow them down, you do the same thing. Do they and, have a breaking point? Um, not really. Not really. Um, the, there will be points, however, where it, when you stretch out lines of causality, other points of causality will s- kind of stick in to the middle. Because that's, that's the way they see things. They see everybody and everything, these Felfkin, I should say, they see everybody and everything as threads of causality. That's just the way the world works. Oh, God, stop. Good. Hey, my brakes are okay. It's just so getting into... Here's a question. Yeah. Let's say someone wanted to go back in time rather than actually traveling back through time. Could they influence the causality to make sure that they were A, born early, B, go through all of the existence that they did in the future, and basically create themselves again by controlling all of the possible outcomes of that creature's life in the past? I don't know. <laughs> My problem is how do you create a loop of yourself? Because that's that's the problem. The problem is figuring out how to keep these loops, how to even affect these loops. Um, Engineer a second self? They aren't. Well, that's... Okay, the story I'm writing, this question is definitely up and about. Oh, God. Hang on, my engine stalled out as I was freaking going to the... Oh, oh, this is so painful to play. (laughs) 60% damage. I wonder how much damage that is. This is going to cost a lot of money, isn't it? This is going to cost a lot of money. Is there insurance in uh, truck sim? No! No! Oh, God! Well, we're now at 73% damage. How, why? <laughs> uh, I slid into another semi. <laughs> it's raining. Brakes don't work too well. You know how it goes. <laughs> I am the best driver. The greatest in the land. No driver can compare. <laughs> Which is more disastrous, this or the final time you played Darkwood before you restarted? Oh my god. <laughs> Darkwood. not in danger of dying here. Darkwood. That was so frustrating. I was just eating my own teeth. I was just... Ah, so mad at myself for making that... Making those mistakes. And the radio especially. Oh, oh come on. I am fucking 50 feet from the repair place. Just, just let me have this game. Let me have this. Actually, I think that's what's happening to another YouTuber I follow, Tetra Ninja. He's been playing Alien Isolation, and the videos are coming out more and more sporadically. Oh, no, you can't do that. You have to have to keep up some kind of consistency when it comes to videos. Um, well, he, puts out, he puts out tons of videos. He's just putting out other videos rather than Alien Isolation because it's frustrating. Yeah. you got to work through it. You gotta work. I have made a decision that no matter what, I am going to finish Darkwood, or at least this version of it, finish the first chapter, as it's called, and I've just started looking up stuff, but there's very little information, like there's very few guides on it. Right now, the Let's Plays are all people have, and uh, or and the Steam forum, I guess. It costs $51,000 to fix this, and frankly, I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay, two words for you. Game Genie. (laughs) I don't think there is a Game Genie for the PC. I think they just call it a crack. (laughs) Or a mod. I think that's that's as far as you can get. So, okay. Import the Grand Theft Auto sprite. (laughs) Because it's top down. Uh, 
if we're going to talk about time, I want to touch on something. One of the most, most interesting theories on the way that time works that I've seen, and it is unique. And that is the way that Homestuck handles time. Go I, on. I don't know how much of a stigma reading Homestuck has, because I know their fans can kind of get... The, the Homestuck fans can kind of, kind of get stupid. I don't have a problem with the comic. I love the comic. I hate the fans. That said, that stigma aside, the way they handle time in Homestuck is fucking brilliant. And they have to because of uh, Dave, who is the warrior of time. This is all... Uh, this is all Act 1 through Act 5 stuff. The way they handle time is there is a prime timeline. There's an, an, a, a single timeline that is the most important timeline. And other timelines branch off from that original timeline. Dave is a time traveler. Oh, I'm hoping I'm getting his name right because it's been about two months since I read Homestuck. And in those two months, I did not get to see Dave. <laughs> Dave, the time traveler. Anyway, we're going to call him Dave anyway. Flame responsibly, readers or listeners. Uh, <laughs> both. Okay, Dave is a time traveler. And he quickly realized that whenever you do something different in the past, it causes a split off from the primary timeline. Well, any time he splits off from the primary timeline, it causes not a paradox, but it causes the timeline to repair itself by dooming that particular timeline. The branched off timeline or the originator? The branched off timeline. So the okay. branched off timeline always loses. It always ends badly. Things always end. Is what I should say. Which is interesting. Time is semi-sentient. It has a particular way that it wants things done. And if things are made in such a way that time is um, given a paradox, time will say fuck you and murder you. Can you only branch off from the main line, or could he go into that branched off secondary universe and just start creating millions of universes out of that? Unknown. The reason why it's unknown is because the story only ever follows the primary timeline. And there's only been one point where one of the doomed Daves goes back in time and now there are two Daves. One of them usually called Prime Dave, and the second one called, I think, Doomed Dave. And or Steve Dave. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. I don't ever get that. I get that a lot, and I don't understand the reference. Have you ever seen, um, oh, Mall Rats? Wow, a long time ago. Y yes. Was he... In it, there's a little segment where two of Kevin Smith's friends have lines, and one tells the other, tell him, Steve, Dave, and then years later, they parlayed it into an awesome podcast, which everyone should check out right now. All right. Huh. Oh. Plug. <laughs> Plug. I don't mind that. As long as we're talking about it, Kevin McLeod, check him out. There yeah. we go. I think I'll go to Le Leipzig. And then we'll call it an episode. So my girlfriend and I have been watching uh, very, very early episodes of Criminal Minds. And it's a very different show from what it became. It was actually a very compelling crime drama. <sighs> what happened? Um, in one episode, a psychopath pulled out a bag and said, What the psychopath got in the bag? I suppose that's not very funny. There's a lot more context than I should be putting. Yeah, that, that certainly uh, sounds like a Kodak moment, man. Being a veteran of many Law & Order episodes, I expect a certain thing from my serial crime drama. 
and when a serial crime drama can throw me on an episode, I'm generally impressed. And it's very, very hard to do that. But the early episodes of Criminal Minds did that, did just that. I couldn't call who the bad guy was. And even then, they called it before I did. Hmm. That is what you generally want from any of your mysteries. You want the, uh, you want the the detectives to be smarter than you, but they they shouldn't cheat. Actually, the episode in question uh, uh, with the psychopath with the bag doesn't even roll like a normal crime story. It starts off in the diner and the lead investigator confronting the psychopath and it's all told in flashback as to how they came to find the psychopath. I've seen the Cosby mystery do the exact same thing. Fucking Cosby. (laughs) Cosby did it. Simpsons did it. I was addicted to 1980s and 1990s uh, mystery shows for a while there. I have seen so much Murder, She Wrote. Oh, they, that's a mighty fine show. Matlock. They, Matlock. they eventually make a lot... They poke a lot of fun at the fact that... Uh, <laughs> that that first town that J.B. Fletcher moved into is like a death trap. <laughs> so many people are dying in this town. I don't understand it. What was the name of it called? Something Cape. Oh, well. So your truck is fully repaired? My truck is fully repaired, and we are about to wrap this up. Well, I had fun. I don't know about you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, after this, I need to do some... about time than answers. <laughs> but that's a good thing. The thing about the thing about the the magic in Anilo is it's set up into three tiers, and those tiers are in complexity of how hard it is to understand the magic, let alone do it. Time is at the top tier. Time is at the top tier, and at the very top of that is uh, Keb or Soul magic, which is I I don't even know. I make guesses as I'm writing. I, uh, I have theories. Thing. You think you write yourself into a hole and you find a whole new door to open up. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that creatively. I think. Well, I like to know what I'm doing with my stories. Is the thing. And sometimes, sometimes when you know exactly what you're doing, you can broadcast where you're going. That's true, but there are cases also where you want to broadcast it. Yeah, foreshadowing is nice. I remember having to do a test on that. Ah, there's a hotel. We'll shack up there. Hookers? European hookers? I don't know about lot lizards in Europe. I'm not they real don't sure. Call them la- Europe. They call them Slovakia. Slovakia. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so beautifully racist. I'm terribly sorry. Everybody, I will give you his email. You can send him messages. (laughs) Well, Al, thanks for uh, showing up to uh, to Casual Truck. And I guess, I guess I am going to to sleep at this rest stop. Yeah, sleep. Yeah, and I got an achievement for sleeping at a rest stop. Fuck yeah. Slovakian. (laughs) Slovakian. (laughs) I'll talk to you guys later. Later.